This is a tale of the future. For centuries, the Sol Hegemon has ruled uncontested the greatest swath of human space in the galaxy. Earth is long abandoned, its great cities reduced to overgrown ruins as mankind has sought new homes and new dominions amongst the stars. But now, the beating heart of the Sol Hegemon has been convulsed by revolution. The rebels claim they fight for freedom and equality, but are they truly any better than those whom they name oppressor? But on the fringe of human space, worlds remain untouched by war and revolt. It is to this region that the crew of the Babylon Rocker have come, seeking peace and escape, both from the chaos of revolution and the dark specters of the past. On the fringe, there is hope. On the fringe is freedom and light and opportunity. But with such freedoms and opportunities come many dangers, some of the future, others of the past that they seek to avoid. Such is the nature of the wild edge of human space. There lies adventure. There goes Babylon Rocker. Last time, Emperor Hante Fujiwa of Rokugan tried to weaken the Gozoku by using the Crab Clan to help cause friction between the rest of the Crane Clan and the Yasuki family. Only it turns out that the hostility between the two factions was so great that the Yasuki literally decided to defect to the Crab Clan, and the Crane decided they would rather have war over it than just let them go. Thus, Fujiwa's plan backfired so badly that all he'd accomplished was to make himself look bad in the process. After all, it was no great secret that he'd been the instigator behind the Crab Clan's encroachments on the Crane. His efforts and those of the Miya Daimyo, Miya Kazu, to resolve the situation peacefully were sabotaged, unbeknownst to all involved, by a cursed artifact. At this point, the war was effectively unavoidable, though apparently not everyone saw it that way. Shortly after the war kicked off, a prominent crane courtier named... <sighs> well, it's spelled Doji Mizuhime, but that makes no sense, so I am calling her Doji Mizuhime. The only way that Mizuhime would make sense is if she was a unicorn. Anyway, Mizuhime went to the Emperor and tried to get him to restrain Hida Ichido while she tried to talk to Yasuki Tsunumi. Both attempts, of course, failed. The Crab Clan champion felt that he was already too invested in claiming land from the Crane and the Yasuki family to do that, while Tsunumi felt that by defecting to the Crab, he'd already crossed a point of no return. And so, the last feeble attempt to avert the Crane-Crab War ended in failure. Alas, there is very, very little detail to be found about exactly what happened during the Crane Crab War apart from the broadest of strokes. And this is something that you have to realize when dealing with events within the timeline of Rokugan prior to the Clan Wars. And that's because technically, the history of Rokugan, at least insofar as the intellectual property of Legend of the Five Rings, begins with the Clan Wars. The Clan Wars was the storyline for the very first edition of L5R. Later editions, at least until Fantasy Flight Games acquired the license and did a big retcon, introduced events later in the timeline after the Clan Wars, like the Destroyer War or the War of the Spirits. As such, apart from the origins of the major clans, every quote historical event of L5R lore that I've talked about up to this point, indeed every event up to the Clan Wars, is mostly based entirely on little bitty blurbs of backstory mostly to provide context for the events of the Clan Wars and the conflicts and storylines that came after it. Which is a very long-winded way of explaining why exactly there are no specific details regards the Crane Crab War, even though technically, as the first recognized war in the history of the Emerald Empire, this should be a big, well-documented event. But it is not. All we know for certain is that for the whole of its 13-year duration, between 387 and the year 400, the Crane and Crab Clan were locked in a constant back-and-forth struggle for control of the Kenkai Hanto Peninsula. Neither was able to gain a definitive advantage over the other until the end of the war. Meanwhile, back in the capital, events were afoot as the Gozoku Conspiracy began setting events in motion that would see Emperor Fujiwa be stripped of all his power. 
In 389, two years after the Crane Crab War had begun, Doji Raigu became the new Emerald Champion, one of the most prestigious positions in all of the Empire, which of course could only strengthen the Gozoku's hand at the expense of the Imperial family. With Emperor Fujiwa's position so gravely weakened, the Gozoku decided that it was about time to make their move. But two noteworthy events would occur between making this decision and acting upon it. The first was that initially the plan as created by Bayushi Atsuki was to eliminate the Hante line entirely. But then, surprisingly, he went to consult with someone. Of all people, with Togashi Hikaru, the Dragon Clan champion. More surprisingly, while Hikaru gave his tacit approval of what Atsuki was doing, he completely quashed the idea of assassinating the Hante line, and Atsuki simply agreed. Remember, Atsuki is a man who thought himself superior to the Emperor himself, and yet here he was unquestioningly following the advice of a man that was supposed to be his equal. Hmm. Anyway, now that the assassination plan had effectively died stillborn, the Gozoku adopted a new plan. They would kidnap Hante Kusada, Emperor Fujiwa's eldest son and heir, and hold him hostage so as to force the Emperor to essentially give over his power to them behind closed doors. It was around this time, though, that the Gozoku came dangerously close to being exposed and possibly destroyed as well. And it all began with a crane samurai named Daidoji Nobuso. Nobuso had originally fought with distinction in the early phase of the Crane Crab War, but at some point suffered injuries that made it impossible for him to return to the front lines. For his meritorious service, he was appointed as Chief Yojimbo, head bodyguard for Doji Raigu, heir to the Crane Clan Championship. It is said that by the time Raigu turned 25, Nobuso had served him faithfully, thwarting three different assassination attempts on the young Crane leader. However, Nobuso became increasingly suspicious of his young master's activities, and began to keep an even closer eye on him than might be warranted for a bodyguard. Thus it was that Daidoji Nobuso discovered Raigu's secret alliance with Bayushi Atsuki and Shiba Gaijushiko. Realizing that the conspiracy was in danger of exposure at a critical moment, Raigu, as Nobuso's lord, demanded his seppuku. Instead, Nobuso fled, killing three crane samurai who tried to stop him. It was not difficult for Raigu to persuade his father, the Crane Clan champion, to have Nobuso branded as a murderer and a ronin, thus discrediting any testimony he might have given in the eyes of society. That brief scare now over, the Gozoku decided that the time had come at last to act. In the year 391, the plan went off without a hitch. Hante Kusada was invited to Bayushi lands and was kidnapped. Broken and despairing by his recent failures, as well as this newest development, Hante Fujiwa effectively conceded to all the Gozoku's demands. Or at least he would have, except four months later, he was dead. It's never mentioned whether he died naturally, was assassinated, or committed seppuku. Either way, Young Kusada was still too young to rule the empire, and so a regent was appointed, Otomo Tohojatsu. He would govern the empire for the duration of Kusada's minority. But it seems that Tohojatsu was either in deep with the Gozoku or particularly weak-willed, as he proceeded to hand the Gozoku more and more power behind closed doors during the six years of his regency. By the year 397, when Hante Kusada ascended the Chrysanthemum Throne as Emperor of Rokugan, he did so as Emperor in name only. The Gozoku had triumphed. Now they were the true rulers of the Emerald Empire. Down in the south, the Crane Crab War continued as ever. However, the Crane had begun to turn the tide in their favor, retaking most of the territory the Crab had claimed, and were even now closing in on Clearwater Village, where the war had begun. This was in large part thanks to the unorthodox tactics of the tactician in charge of the Crane armies, Daidoji Masayoshi. Another major factor in recent Crane successes may have been the fact that, 40 years after the victory with no strike, the first crop of proper crane shugenja trained by the former master of air Asahina himself had come of age and were now contributing to the war effort. In fact, in the same year as Emperor Kusada's ascension to the throne, the great shugenja himself lay on his deathbed. 
and his lord, Doji Mizobu, came to see him. What I'm about to say next is mostly headcanon because it's never mentioned explicitly in any of the sources, but given factors like the timing of the victory with no strike, as well as the fact that Kiriko was specifically mentioned as the daughter of the Crane Clan champion, I'm inclined to think that she was Mizobu's sister since she was way too old at this point to be his daughter, thus making Kiriko Doji Raigu's aunt and Asahina his uncle. At any rate, in return for a lifetime of service to his adopted clan, Doji Mizobu bestowed upon the dying Asahina the rank of Daimyo, thus creating the Asahina family. Of course, Asahina didn't really live long enough to enjoy his new position, and upon his death, leadership was passed to his and Kiriko's son, Asahina Miroken. This turned out to be one of Doji Mizobu's last acts as Crane Clan champion. There is no given date for his death. All we know for sure is that he did die before the Crane Crab War concluded in the year 400. The other of Mizobu's final acts was to order Daidoji Masayoshi to retake all of the remaining lands held by the Crab, including Clearwater Village. And so, in the year 398, the Crane Tactician attempted to carry out his lord's last command. A massive crane army attempted to take Clearwater Village by land and by sea, but the Caillou family had done their work well, and Clearwater Village had been turned from a trading post into a fortress. The fighting lasted for seven full days. It is said that even the students from the local dojos took part in the defense, and against that defense, the crane did little more than break themselves. By the end of the week, reinforcements from the crab arrived, and the crane army was routed. Among the casualties was Daidoji Masayoshi himself. The failed attempt to take Clearwater Village was the last major action of the Crane Crab War. By this point, the two great clans were thoroughly exhausted. And so, for the first time since the war began, efforts were made to try and resolve the matter peacefully. Officially, it was the will of the new Emperor Kusada that peace be achieved, more likely this was done at the instigation of the Gozoku. Peace talks finally concluded in the year 400, with the Kankei Hanto Peninsula being roughly evenly divided between the two belligerents. While some, especially the Crane, were highly motivated to view the outcome as a draw, it's hard to deny that the end was really a Crab Clan victory, albeit a fairly costly one. In the end, they had gained land and a new family in the form of the Yasuki. The Crane had lost the Yasuki family as well as the land. For being the one to lead his family in their defection to the Crab, Yasuki Tsanumi would be reviled by the Crane for generations. At the same time, the Crab would lionize him as a hero. The Crab victory created a lasting legacy of bitterness on the part of the Crane clan. One that would never really go away no matter how many centuries passed. During the peace talks, Doji Suzume, the idealistic and naive young son of the principal crane diplomat Doji Onegano, made some ill-considered comments on the evils of great wealth, particularly on the part of the samurai caste. Word of Suzume's comments caused a great deal of uproar among the peasants, who were very supportive of this view. And since Suzume was often written off as an empty-headed fool, it persuaded the new crane champion, Doji Raigu, that this was all part of a scheme on Onagano's part to usurp him as leader of the crane clan. In a rare display of outrage, the normally controlled Raigu responded to this supposed disloyalty by expelling Onagano, his family, and his retainers from the crane clan. Shocked and humiliated by this sudden fall from grace, Onagano retired to a monastery leaving young Suzume and his aunt Masako to go off and form the Sparrow Clan. That same year, the Ikoma family, dismayed by their failure to anticipate the outbreak of the Crane Crab War, founded the Lion's Shadow, an elite cadre of Lion Clan spies. With that, we come to the end of the Crane Crab War and the end of the 4th century. Next time, the early reign of the Gozoku, and one of the darkest moments in the history of the Emerald Empire, the Five Knights of Shame. Until then. <laughs>